whatever everybody okay so i'm here to talk to you guys about um the second episode of black mirror season four which is called archangel and i'm just gonna get quick and straight to the point um so this episode is taking on parental controls parental advisory all that other stuff that parents do to protect their kids from unwanted content content from the internet cable even on your phone um a couple of months ago i bought a new phone and i noticed there's an app on my phone let's say i was to have kids and i was to buy that them phones and put them under the same plan as my own in sprint the sprint family plan i would be able to use an app a sprint app as a gps to track where my kids are so it's certain parental controls like that and then of course um parents can use parental controls to monitor what their kids watch on the internet what they can watch on cable even youtube have certain parental controls as well so in archangel remember what i said earlier when i reviewed um hang the dj black mirror is basically technology on steroids and how the consequences of humans relying too heavily on technology so what could go wrong from a parent implementing a device in their child's head and using that device to monitor everything that their child is doing and well archangel i just have to say this when i finished watching archangel i was speechless very speechless so you have the mother her name is marie and she has a daughter named sarah and at sarah's birth marie was sort of paranoid and she kind of has she has a good reason for doing for for being paranoid because um she had a cesarean section and i think there's a reason why they chose whoever wrote the episode chose to have Mer have sarah be delivered via c-section and the reason for that is i remember a couple of years ago i i read um an article which states that cesarean sections kind of prevent mothers from having from bonding with the child immediately after birth i've noticed when i've watched documentaries about birth and so on and so forth when a child is born they immediately put through um, natural birth they put the child on the mother's chest and the mother and the the child has a couple of minutes to actually bond um and you know the mother is there cuddling her child the child is there relaxing on the ch on the mother's chest probably feeling her skin t um you know touching her smelling her all of that stuff um when a cesarean section when a cesarean is performed on a mother a mother is not afforded that instead the child is immediately taken to the incubator or wherever they take the child to and the nurses start working on you know working on the child and the mother she's laying on the surgery table so that the doc the surgeon the doctor will put her you know back together so there's no there's no immediate bonding and I think that is the significance of Marie having a cesarean section to give birth to her child, Sarah. There was no immediate bonding between mother and child. And then on top of that, when Sarah was basically pulled out from her mother's uterus, Sarah did not immediately cry. So right then and there, Marie was worried and she started panicking. She even started screaming out her daughter's name, Sarah, Sarah, in the surgery room. So that right there <clears throat> started her paranoia. Jump three years later, um, they're walking to the park and they always have to walk past a house that has a dog a dog that barks all the time um and it sort of scares sarah just a little bit not too much but marie is visibly uncomfortable with this dog barking at at her daughter sarah so long story short um 
Sarah, Marie takes Sarah to the playground. Just for one second, Marie just looks away. And then when she looks back to see where her daughter is, she doesn't see Sarah. So she starts to panic. And luckily for her, it doesn't take that long. Other people started helping her to look for Sarah. And eventually Sarah is found. And it was, I believe it was a black guy. He, he was, he carried Sarah and he told her, hey, I found her by the train track. She was playing with a cat. So Sarah, so Marie, of course she's relieved, but now she's very, um, um, she's very worried. And this experience makes her want to get the Archangel device. So this device is very simple. It's very painless. They just go, Doop. they just use this, this really sharp needle to implant the device in the child. No anesthesia <laughs> used anything. It's very simple. Just Doop. and boom, the device is inside the child's, inside the child's mind. Now, one thing I like to say is instead of Marie sitting Sarah down, and Sarah's three years old, she's old enough to comprehend certain things. Instead of Marie sitting down and teaching Sarah, hey, just because you see a cat or a dog wandering in the playground or wherever, that does not mean you should go and follow that that dog or that um or that that kitten you must stay where mommy will see you she doesn't teach her ch child that instead she would just rather monitor her child's every single move that's the protectiveness of of certain of a lot of parents um so the device is implanted inside her daughter's her, inside her daughter's um head and there's a woman there that teaches Marie how to navigate through the app. So you use the app through a tablet, similar to an iPad, and you click on the app and the Archangel app opens up and it tells you, it gives you different icons. So you can use the Archangel device for, for anything. You can use it to monitor your child's vital signs, which I thought was pretty good in case Sarah gets seriously sick. You can take the child to the hospital and you can immediately show the doctor your child's vital signs. And, and I'm sure the doctor can use that to make a good, healthy diagnosis. Um, another feature is you can use the device to see what your child is seeing. So you click on the icon. I think it's the icon that looks like an eye. You click on it and you can see what your child sees. And I thought... That's another good idea because God forbid your child gets kidnapped, you can immediately call the cops and you can show the cops on um, the Archangel app. You click on the icon and they can see where your child is and that can possibly make it even quicker for them to find um, your child. Because I, I think is if you're not able, if a child is missing for more than 24 hours, the likelihood of you finding that child alive is the chances are very very low so being able to see what your child sees that's that's kind of a good thing but as the episode goes along and then there's another feature and I think seeing what your child sees was the borderline and I think where I started feeling uncomfortable is if there's something that your child sees and you as a parent feels as if that will make your child uncomfortable, you can filter that icon out. For example, remember I said earlier, every time they walk, they have in the neighborhood, they have to walk past, they seem to walk past this house that has a dog that barks at Sarah. So after the device is implanted inside Sarah, the mother filters that image out. Meaning, every time when Sarah looks at that barking dog, she just sees a blurred figure. And then she also hears muffled sounds. So she's not seeing the dog and she's not hearing the dog. So that just blocks off her perception 
of probably what a dog is, probably how, how a dog sounds and so on and so forth. And I think it's just only for that particular dog. Um, and I think that crosses the line and it, because she blurred certain, um, images for Sarah, Sarah became desensitized to certain things. For example, Sarah gets older. So this, this device has been on her, she was three years old when she got the device and then they did another time jump. And I think in the time jump, Sarah is nine, either nine or 10 years old. So for six to seven years, she already has this device. She has no exposure to this barking dog and she has no exposure to any violent images. So one day she goes to school and because she doesn't have a sense of these things, she's disconnected from other students, from other kids at her school. And there's this mischievous kid called, what's his name? Trick, called Trick. He's very mischievous, he always shows violent images always shows pornographic images to the kids sarah can't see it because it's filtered out so um one day she asked trick can you just describe what you're showing because i can't see it and so trick describes to her what he showed the other kids so she goes back home and she starts drawing what trick described to her when she gets to drawing the blood it starts to filter out she just sees a red blurred image and she starts to get frustrated she keeps drawing it and the more she draws the more blurred figures she sees then she looks at her finger she gets she sharpens her pencil and then she pricks her finger to see her own blood and eventually she sees a little bit, but then it starts to blur out. Then she gets really upset and you just see Sarah stabbing her fingers with this lead pen, pencil. So then the mother is downstairs and she gets an alert on the Archangel app that her daughter is in distress. So she clicks on the, the icon to see what her daughter is seeing and she sees her daughter stabbing herself. So she goes upstairs, she takes the pencil away from Sarah. She's like, what are you doing? And Sarah just slaps her. I was like, what? She just slapped her own mother. And so the next scene, um, there's a child psychologist speaking to Sarah. And then after he finishes assessing Sarah, he talks to Marie. And he tells Marie, you know, your daughter she's acting out because she doesn't have certain experiences to certain things that a child is supposed to have during her age. I recommend that you stop using the device. So here's the thing. She cannot, once you implant the device inside your child's mind, you cannot take it out. So the only way for you to stop using the device is just to not, you know, not to use the app on your tablet anymore. So Marie promises that she will stop using the app. So Sarah is nine, 10 years old. So now we time jump to when Sarah is 15. So she's a teenager. And this is when things get complicated. So remember, it's been five years since, um, five or six years since um, Marie has used, um, has been used, has not been using the app. So as a teenager, the trick, he's older and it's obvious that trick likes Sarah. So one day they decided to all hang out trick, Sarah, her friend, Meryl, they all decide to hang out at, by the lake with other teenagers. So Sarah comes up with a story to tell her mom, well, a lie, to, to tell her mom that she and Meryl are going over to their friend's house, Riley, to watch the breakfast club. Marie is going on a date, so she said, fine. 
um, I'll be back by 11.30. Sarah agrees she'll be back by 11.30. They leave. So Mar after Marie is finished with her date, she's on her way home. So she calls Meryl's mother and say, hey, where's Sarah? Da, da, da. Can you just tell Sarah that um, I'm on my way, whatever? Sorry, first she calls Riley's mother. My bad. Because they remember, Sarah told um, the mother that she was over at Riley's house. So first she called Riley's mother and the mother's, Riley's mom was like, um, no, they're not here. And so she said, okay, maybe they went over to Meryl's house, you know, for snacks or whatever. So she calls, she calls Mer Meryl's mother and Meryl's mother's like, no, they're not here. So Marie's panic starts to kick in. She goes home. She's frantic frantically looking for the for the tablet because she she hid it but she, eventually she found it she used the gps tracker and she sees that her daughter is at the lake so i'm thinking okay good sarah got her ass caught she's gonna get in trouble all that stuff the mother then presses on the eye icon to see what sarah sees and she sees trick on top of her daughter and she's hearing her daughter moaning and all that stuff and I literally screamed <laughs> and the reason why I screamed I was like because ah! <laughs> you are watching your daughter having sex <laughs> that mm, that was one of the and I have grown up watching Freddy Krueger, Jason, um, Chucky, American Horror Story. Wait, no, no, I American Horror Story. There were some scenes that made me go, What the fuck? Okay, so take out American Horror Story, but this scene, this scene was so uncomfortable to watch and thank god it only lasted for a couple of seconds but it felt like eternity like what parent would want to see that so marie she's like uh, uh, and of course she's disgusted and um she doesn't tell sarah that she started reusing archangel she keeps that to herself and that backfires on Marie. Eventually, she starts using the app all the time to make sure that Sarah is where she is. And instead of her, once again, instead of her sitting down and talking to Sarah, having a conversation with Sarah, she would just rather just, she would, she would just rather use this app to sort of do the job for her just to protect and over, and just overwatch um, Sarah and that's what a lot of parents what overprotective parents seem to do so um, what should I call it so eventually she uses the app um, she sees that Sarah is at a warehouse or whatever and the warehouse that Sarah is at is the warehouse where Trick works so she sees, she uses the app to see what Sarah sees, and she sees Sarah sniffing cocaine. Um, then, <laughs> then, um, because of that, Sarah use Marie goes the next day. Marie drives over to the warehouse, and she basically tells Trip. If you continue seeing my daughter, I will show this, the footage of Sarah doing drugs, show it, and you will get into trouble. She basically said, she said, stay the fuck away from my daughter. So after that, Trick just seizes all contact with Sarah. No matter how many times Sarah calls him or whatever, he does not respond back. Um, and of course, Sarah confronts Trick, but Trick doesn't tell her the truth. Then later on, um, the mother, Marie, she's driving and a notification bell, a, notif a notification alert came from the Arc Agent app. 
and you just see Marie's facial expression, but they don't show you what the notification was. You just see her go inside the pharmacy. Every morning, uh, Marie always makes smoothies for for Sarah. And the reason why she does this is, remember the first time the woman showed Marie how to use the app, especially to show how she can use the app to um, monitor her daughter's vital signs. There was a, a red alert that showed up and it showed that she, that Sarah is low on iron. So the woman suggested to Marie, you should introduce supplements, dietary supplements to Sarah. So every morning she's creating smoothies for Sarah. In this particular scene, after she came out, she came back from the pharmacy, excuse me, the next day, you see her crushing some pills. So I'm thinking these are vitamin pills that she's adding into the smoothie. So then Sarah goes to school and she starts to feel very sick. She gets up and she throws up. So I'm thinking, oh shit, she's pregnant. In any movie, in any television show, whenever you see a woman, you know, throw up, if she didn't drink a whole bunch and she just out of the blue just starts throwing up, boom she's pregnant <laughs> so she goes to the school nurse nurse and the school nurse is like oh well it's okay you're just feeling the side effects from um from your pregnancy and sarah was like what i she was like wait I'm, I'm pregnant and the school nurse said well not anymore because the because of the morning after pill that you that you took and sarah is like wait what and she's putting two together, and that's when she realizes that her mother knew that she was pregnant. And the mother sort of basically forced an abortion on, on her daughter, Sarah. And I feel as if this scene is very powerful because as controversial as abortion is, Nobody talks about the fact that some, sometimes abortions are forced upon women. There are women that, would, that do want to have the baby, but because of family, society, or so on and so forth, even because of their male partner, they go and have an abortion against their will. And nobody talks about this. Not anybody from the left, not anybody from the right. Nobody talks about this. And I know it's probably a small percentage of women that go through this, but you hear the stories of women that want to have the baby, but their family, you know, say, no, this is against our um, our image. It's not going to look right on us that we have an unwed daughter having a child out of wedlock you better go and get that abortion or else. Or if they go and tell their significant other that they are pregnant, that man might say, I'm not ready to be no dad. You better go get this abortion, especially if you want to still stay with me. And there will be women that will actually do that. And this is essentially what Marie did to her daughter. She never gave her daughter the opportunity to make a decision on whether or not she wants to keep the child or at least give birth to the child and give the child up for adoption. She just took it upon herself to make that decision for Sarah. Um, so Sarah goes back home. She goes through the trash can and she sees the container that has the emergency contraception in it. And immediately, she goes upstairs and she starts looking for the Archangel device and she sees that it's, it's being used. So she immediately, she starts, going, she starts packing up. Marie comes back home from grocery shopping and then she sees that the trash is all over, is spilled all over the kitchen. And she immediately puts two and two together that her daughter probably knows about the emergency contraception. She goes to her bedroom and she sees the Archangel device which is kind of weird because remember she hits it. So she puts on the Archangel device. She clicks on the eye icon to see what Sarah sees. And on the screen, she sees her back. So she turns around and there's Sarah. 
and Sarah just goes berserk. She takes the tablet from Marie and she just starts hitting her own mother with the tablet. Sarah doesn't have, um, she doesn't have, she only had experiences to extreme violence. Because remember when she was a kid, Trick would only show, would show the kids violent videos and it's not like you know action movie violence or even wrestling violence it's like real violence like i think in one of the videos that he shows sarah he shows a beheading to sarah so sarah only has exposure to extreme violence and she's enacting this out on her mother the scene after she and trick have sex when they're laying in the van, Trick tells Sarah, hey, you know, you don't have to talk to me like, like how porn stars talk to, you know, whoever they're having sex. And she's like, well, you know, why? He's like, just don't do that. Just be yourself. And the only reason why Sarah does that is because the only exposure that she had to sex was porn because that's what Trick used to show all the kids. So because she only has these experiences of extremes with violence, with sex, she enacts those out with the violent way that she responds to her mother. And then when she and Trick have sex, she only talks to him like like a, like how porn stars do in whatever movie that they do. <laughs> so I thought she was going to kill her mother, but eventually she stops and she gets up she takes her stuff and she leaves sarah's mother um marie she eventually wakes up and her face is just is as if she went through several rounds with well with you know, holly is it holly combs <laughs> it's like holly Combs just just did them kicks on her face and then she starts calling out to her daughter, Sarah, Sarah. She's screaming Sarah's name. And this goes back to the beginning of the episode when Sarah wasn't crying when she was delivered and Marie was screaming out Sarah's name. So she did all of this to keep her daughter close to her. But the irony of it is that it pushed her daughter away from her. Um, and that's the problem with parents overprotecting their, their children. Um, you're trying so hard to keep your child close to you, but the irony of it is that you're actually pushing your child away instead of, and I'm, I'm not a parent. I don't know any better. And I heard parent is a on learning job, you know, um, but you know, instead of Sarah, not Sarah, Marie sitting Sarah, like like I said earlier, when Sarah saw the kitten and walked away, and by the grace of God, Sarah was found, instead of Marie sitting down and having that uncomfortable conversation with Sarah at three years old and telling her, hey, you know, you can't follow a cat or whatever, she just decides to get Archangel. When she sees that disturbing image of Sarah having sex with Trick, instead of sitting Sarah down and telling her, educating her about sex and how to protect herself and so on and so forth, she just relies on the Archangel app. And that's what Black Mary is, is about. The consequences of us heavily relying on technology to do what we're supposed to do. And in this case, Marie relied heavily on the app to protect her daughter instead of engaging with her daughter. And that's what caused her daughter to leave. And who knows if Sarah will will come back. So yeah, it was I I was left speechless after watching um after watching this episode. So yeah, that is my review of Archangel. The next episode that I will talk about is USS Callister. And then after that, I am going to talk about Black Museum. I can't wait to talk about Black Museum. Um, so I will see you guys later.
Stay warm, New York.